Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with another page 112 tag. I'm going to be sharing page 112 only from three books I recently bought and I'm going to give you my reaction to those pages. You will formulate your own response, your own evaluation of each and at the end I'm going to rank them in terms of which was my first pick, second and third. You will do the same and then I will reveal the titles and authors. Of course I know what books these are but I haven't read them and it's more fun to keep you guys in suspense until the very end. If you want more information on the page 112 tag please check out my show notes. Without further ado, book number one. A portion of the delicate mechanism of the brain appeared to be irrevocably damaged. Like a clock, you know, the doctor explained. A clock that stops under a certain set of unusual conditions and refuses ever to go again beyond a particular point. I had one at home, never got beyond three o'clock on an afternoon. Bumfer, however, was prepared to call on Irma at the lodge, and in his own words, give it a go. The interview had begun at 10 a.m. with the policeman in the bedside chair, nicely shaven, pencil and notebook at the ready. By midday, he was sitting back with a cup of tea and expressing his gratitude for an abortive two hours that had yielded precisely nothing. At least nothing in the official sense, although he had appreciated being sadly smiled at now and then by one so young and beautiful. Well, I'll be off now, Miss Leopold, and if anything does happen to pop into your mind, just send me a message, and I'll be up here in two flicks of a duck's tail. He rose to go, replaced the rubber band round the blank pages of his notebook with a reluctance not entirely official, mounted his tall grey horse and trotted slowly down the drive towards his one o'clock dinner, in low spirits that even his favourite plum pie did nothing to dispel. On the following Saturday afternoon, the Macedon grapevine reported the arrival of another visitor at the lodge, a lady, pretty as a picture in lilac silk, in a buggy and pair driven by a foreign gentleman with a black moustache who had asked the way to Lakeview at Manassas store. Everyone on the mount knew that Mrs. Cutler was caring for the heroine of the college mystery, rescued on Hanging Rock by Colonel Fitzhubert's handsome young nephew from England. The latest turn of events was juicy enough to set the village of Upper Macedon gossiping and guessing all over again. It was rumored that the nephew had broken all his front teeth, scaling a sixty-foot precipice, that he was madly in love with the girl, that the lovely little heiress had sent to Melbourne for two dozen chiffon nightdresses and wore three strings of pearls in bed at the lodge. Okay, what did you think of that? I found it really compelling. So I don't know whether to trust this doctor's diagnosis that he's telling the policeman about the woman, Miss Leopold. Is he just giving Miss Leopold a cover story or is she brain damaged? I don't know. It just I wondered that as I was reading it. Yeah, what's going on here? What is the policeman investigating? And what's happened? Is, is it Miss Leopold? Is she the heroine of the college mystery? Capital C, capital M. Yeah, the story really sucks me in. I don't know what's going on. I know very little about this novel, so I'm just on the basis of this one page. The writing is great but nothing jumps out at me as oh that's a nice turn of phrase it's not that kind of writing it's above workmanlike but just it's the story is really yeah I like the description of the policeman at Miss Leopold's bedside and him enjoying just having a break because she's not talking being sadly smiled at now and then and he was sad to leave and even the uh, favorite plum pie at Though his one o'clock dinner did not dispel that not entirely professional sadness. Yes, I like it very much. Book number two. Time was I'd have any number of fountain pens on the go at the same time, but they were not interchangeable for the reason that they each contained a different colored cartridge and therefore each had a specific and distinct function. 
I would negotiate both high-minded matters and bureaucratic downers with the steely blue-black, flourish the gold for noteworthy turning points and milestones, and switch over to green, perhaps, for more clandestine dealings. Yes, secretly, I wrote occasionally in green, right up until quite some time ago, even after I learnt about the stigma associated with it. Perhaps, in fact, I appreciated there being a stigma and felt duty-bound to develop it further. Added to which, my fountain pens were stolen. What I mean is, I stole them quite easily, so that at all times I never had fewer than three fountain pens in the top outside pocket of my crombie. I did not have the clips of the pen lids fastened over the pocket, ever, by the way. Certainly the tops of the pens were just about visible over the pocket, but since that was just how it went, I had no doubts whatsoever as to whether this was acceptable or not. In any case, it was a particularly shabby coat with a straggly length of thread where the top button should have been, and pockets that fell into the lining, and a somewhat hardened hem bent all out of shape. So really it would have been nigh on impossible to look highfalutin in it, which was just as well, because the last thing I ever wanted was to look highfalutin. Ah, I freaking love that! What a voice. I really thought it was going to be boring, this long description of fountain pens, but uh-uh! I don't know if this is a man or a woman, but I want to know much more about them. What a s bit of literary sorcery to shape a voice and a character so distinctly on the page by talking about fountain pens. My favorite line, added to which my fountain pens were stolen. I mean, that's such an ambiguous, I mean, most people would think Somebody stole his or her stolen pen. Her, somebody stole his or her fountain pens. Added to which, my fountain pens were stolen. Dash. What I mean is, I stole them. Dash. Oh my god. I want to keep reading. Yeah. I mean, it's simple writing. Really effective. I love the long sentences that just couldn't be a word shorter and be as effective. The last thing I ever wanted to was look highfalutin. Really fantastic. This is... Should I just stop the video now? <laughs> That's how I feel. Love it! Book number three. Hello, Flory! Etta Kirby waved to her from the edge of the square and walked across with her usual India rubber step. She was in her early thirties, all bounce and bon homi curly hair springing from beneath the brim of her health visitor's hat. She dropped onto the bench with an impact that sent the fleas' pencil skidding across the page. Golly, I could do with some fresh air, she said. Been visiting a family in Bloemfontein House, and the grandfather was busy sticking new soles on the children's boots with fish glue. There was a pot of it bubbling in a pan the whole time. I might as well have been bathing in the stuff. Can you smell it? She offered a sleeve to the flea, who sniffed, recoiled, and nodded. Oh, Lord! Etta gave a crow of laughter and leaned back with her eyes closed, face up to the sun. Five minute break, she said. Tell me if anyone comes by. Remember, Miss Beering? Comport yourselves with dignity, ladies. To be respected, one must look respectable and behave respectfully, however alien the situation. Good old Beery. Etta, have you recommended any children for sunshine homes lately? I have, as a matter of fact. A couple of kiddies who'd survived whooping cough and were living in a room that was as damp as a... a sponge. I didn't have much luck. The home in Watford was full, and the one in Barnet's been converted into a hospital for infantile paralysis. They've had heaps of cases lately, they say, and some of those poor might stay in for years. Okay, well, that's really lively writing. Uh, I, it's hard for me to assess it because there's so much dialogue. The dialogue is interesting. It seems like 
like we're back in time somewhat. And they seem like social workers or something like that. But it, because there's so much style, I really can't evaluate it. The writing is fine. I don't know if I'm really interested in the story or not because it's just talking about stuff. But there's nothing here that turns me off. Dialogue heavy page 112s are really hard. A bit of humor. They're making fun of maybe their superior or something misbearing. Behave respectfully, however alien the situation. Yeah, I like it. That's all I got for that one. So, I think my the order of my books is going to be fairly obvious this time. It's not much of a contest. My first pick is book number two on the strength of that first person voice. My second pick is book number one because the story sounds really interesting. And it's a little bit distant would be book number three, but I'm prepared to be pleasantly surprised once I start reading the, the novel. So, two, one, three. So now I will reveal the books to you in the order in which I've selected them and tell you a bit about them. So my first pick was book number two, and that is Pond by Claire Louise Bennett. Look at this gorgeous hardcover that just came in the mail the other day. And it's a debut novel. Claire Louise Bennett is British, is she not? She is Irish, even better. It's not a gorgeous cover. It's a painting by Marguerite Smolders. And this came out last year, didn't it? In fact, it was first published in 2015. I've heard good things about it. And it's about a young woman, wry and somewhat misanthropic and keenly observant, chronicling her lives on the outskirts of a coastal village. This is one of those books in which not much happens, but based on the page 112, I don't need much to happen with a narrative voice, with a narrator like that. So actually, I'm going to be doing a buddy read of this with Britta Bowler starting. Maybe by the time this video goes up, we will have already started. That's why I wanted to get a, it into a page 112 video before I actually started reading it. So can't wait. So that's book number two, my first choice. My second choice is book number one, Picnic at Hanging Rock by Joan Lindsay. Now, somebody on booktube was raving about this in June, which caused me to add it to my TBR. And then a Litzy friend mentioned it again, and her Twitter, her private message on Twitter came through just as I was finalizing an Amazon Japan order. So I added that book to the order, and here it is. This came last Friday. In fact, uh, these, these two came in the same shipment. Uh, classic Australian novel originally published when? 1967. Joan Lindsay was uh, Australian. She died in Melbourne in 1984. And this was made into a famous movie of the same name by Peter Ware. Peter Ware. And what's it about? Set in 1900, a group of students at the Apple Yard College for Young Ladies go for a picnic at the Hanging Rock three girls climbed towards the volcano, maybe up on the mountain. I'm just kind of scanning this and disappeared and were never heard from again. Wow. Okay, so that's probably what the police investigation was about. So people, even if I don't remember who they are, even if I don't remember who they all are, people whose literary tastes I trust uh, rave about this and I am going to read it as soon as I can. And my third pick was book number three, Old Baggage by Lisa Evans. This was just published a few weeks ago, last month. I happened to find out about it on Twitter, and it sounds really good. And I just think the I didn't have much to go on for the page 112, but there was nothing about the writing that turned me off per se either. It is about a suffragette, Matty Simkin, 
She was a militant during that, that struggle, jailed five times, activist, heckled Winston Churchill, and she's now middle-aged, so that would be set 1930s, something like that. Doesn't know what to do with herself, where to pour her energies, and it's about that. This is a novel, not a memoir, and it's about that uh, process of her reinvention. Old baggage. Look at that cover. I know Anne Beyond the Pages has recently started reading it. I was hoping to buddy read it with her. Because, in fact, I think I was the one, I'm not sure, I think I was the one who told her about it. And uh, I had too much going on, so I couldn't. So I'm curious to see what she thinks and try it myself. That is this batch of page 112. Which books would you be most likely to read? That was fun. And that's all I got. Thanks for watching.